Hi, and welcome back to another broadcast of The Apostolic Voice. Uh, my name is Apostle Lance Bellany, along with Apostle Vincent Poole, and we want to thank you for joining us again on our program concerning the voice of the apostolic. And today we want to talk with you about just that. We want to talk about um, what is the apostolic and why is it important, and in particular, why is it important in this generation and in this season that the kingdom of heaven is operating. And we're going to talk about the history of the apostolic, the mandate uh, of the apostolic, and, uh, and we also want to talk about uh, the apostolic voice. And so, Apostle, with that said, uh, let's kind of jump in and talk about both of you and I carry the, uh, the title, the anointing. And that's really what it is more than a title, it's mm -hmm. an anointing. Uh, of apostle, but a lot of people out there uh, that are watching may not understand what an apostle is. And let me let me just take a few moments to set this set your response up. Uh, we embrace uh, from Ephesians uh, the pastoral ministry. Uh, we're skeptical about the prophetic ministry. We embrace the evangelistic ministry. Uh, we brush over the teaching ministry. We give it lip service. But the one ministry of all of those that are talked about in Ephesians is the apostolic ministry, and we've relegated that ministry to the death of the last biblical apostle, or the apostle re uh, recorded in, in Scripture. And, uh, and I think that is a grave error on the part of the modern religious system, and in particular on the part of the, the, the church, uh, the, uh, the system church. So with that said, I want to say, uh, kind of turn it over to you and let you kind of bring us into uh, what is the apostolic and give us some history uh, around the anointing of the apostle. Well, to kind of piggyback on what you just said, uh, the most of today's or a lot of today's uh, believers relegate that there are no modern day apostles, unfortunately. But when, when we look at the scripture in Ephesians 4, Paul said something very clear. He said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And then he said, until, until. we all come, until. So that until has not been fulfilled. And when you look at he gave, it's a continuation mm -hmm. verb. So he continually gives until we call come into the unity of the faith, unto the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Amen. We have not come to that place as a body of believers. No question about that. None whatsoever that we have not come anywhere close to the unity of the faith. And, and, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to give it back to you here in just a second. But when we look at the body of Christ, there is debate as to whether or not uh, abortion, the aborting of an unborn uh, child, is right or wrong. There is debate within the church concerning that. Along with whether or not we should baptize in Jesus' name or whether or not we should baptize in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There is debate mm -hmm. along those lines. And probably more pertinent to our conversation, there is debate over whether or not our Lord is still calling apostles to the kingdom. Absolutely. So all, of, the, all of that debating and all of that division still creates disunity within the body of Christ. It absolutely does. Uh, because uh, then we, we negate what Paul actually said in another place in Ephesians. He said, ye are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yes. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Well, if the apostles is a foundational gift and the church, the body has not Continue, the structure has not 
been completely fulfilled or completely matured, you still need a foundation to build the house. Amen. Amen. If we are the house, the temple of God, without the true apostolic foundation that's still continuing to lay down its life, that's still continuing to be that uh, master builder that Amen. God ordained the apostles to be, then how can you build the temple without the apostolic voice? The apostolic voice clearly is the foundation of the things by which we uh, hold dear, the foundation by which that which is known as the church today has been built upon. There's no question about that. We have to understand, though, beloved, as you watch this program, we have to understand that, that one of the most significant understandings about the apostolic is that our Lord today is still calling and appointing apostles to the kingdom for specific duties and specific manifestations of the kingdom that he wants to bring forth. He brings that through the voice of the apostolic. Talk a little bit about the, the historical aspect. You know, apostles are, are kind of, they get, their, they get their notoriety from when Jesus called them apostles, but there is more history behind the spirit of the apostolic. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to look at all the way back to the book of Genesis, a lot of people might not accept this, accept that this uh, interpretation or this revelation. But Genesis 3.23 says, God sent forth the man. Amen. Amen. Sent forth. Yes. Yeah, sent forth the man to till the ground from whence he came. Listen, Adam was a sent one. Amen. And when you're tilling the ground, you're preparing it for seed. Amen. Correct? Amen. Amen. What seed? Genesis 3.15. God said the seed of the woman. So he was preparing the ground. What ground? The earth itself. Amen. To receive the seed of salvation itself. The seed that would bring mankind face to face or full circle back to his place and position in God. Amen. Amen. So the apostolic, you know, we, you know, again, from a historical standpoint, we tend to limit the apostolic to uh, the 12 men, especially hardliners, if you will, uh, biblical hardliners. They tend to limit the apostolic to the 12 men but we even know that in those, uh, in the scriptures themselves, it denies that hardline approach through the manifestation of Apostle Paul's apostolic call. Talk a little bit about that. And, you know, if, if the hardliners want to say that the apostles died with the twelve, then, then how do we reconcile Paul? We can't. Okay. We can't. I've heard people say that... Uh, Paul was there. Well, he was not. You know, he was there when they stoned Stephen. Mm -hmm. And he was holding their coats. He received his call on the Damascus Road. Uh, and the road to Damascus, Paul was a Pharisee. And Paul thought he was doing a great service to God mm -hmm. by murdering those that were followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. Taking them to jail. Like I said, beating them, scourging them, killing them. Amen. Whatever it took to rid the world of this pestilence as he saw it at Amen. that point. And so, so apostolically, it, 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 it clearly, you know, the, the, the history behind the apostolic or the historical um, lineage, if you will, of the apostolic goes way back to Adam, uh, even Abraham went forth and was sent forth, called forth by God. Um, uh, even Moses yeah. was sent forth. That's what it said. God said to Moses upon their encounter, he said, come let me send you Amen. to my people. And he asked Jeremiah, who will go for us and whom shall we send? 
Jeremiah volunteered for the call. Well, Isaiah, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. Uh, Isaiah, he said, here am I, send me. Amen. And so, you know, the, the sending of one, you know, the, the direct commissioning and sending of one by our Lord uh, uh, gives forth to that, to that understanding of the apostolic. Um, and so when our Lord began to choose the 12, when he began to choose these 12 men, uh, and the scriptures even talk about one being a devil, uh, but when he began to choose those 12 men, that was a manifestation of his earthly ministry and the men that he called um, for their season and their generation. Is the Lord calling apostles to generations subsequent to our Lord's earthly ministry? We've got to absolutely believe that. And Solomon manifested a word in Ephesians 3, to everything there is a season. Amen. To there, everything. Everything there is a season. God is not in time. Time is in God. God is not limited by the minute perspective of the human rationality or mindset. And that's what we've tried to do by holding him prisoner to what has been written in times past. By doing so, when we start talking about, when we start talking about the apostolic voice and subsequently try to uh, uh, box God in into a, uh, a time span or a mindset, we begin to lose the perspective on the things that he wants to bring forth in our generation. Okay? So what I want to share with the audience, and I want us to talk a little bit about, is the fact that when God, or when our Lord, found Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, <laughs> and he called him, and began to deliver unto him that which he was being called to deliver to the kingdom and take to the kingdom. Where and how does that have an impact on us today? And, and, and if I need to rephrase my question, let me know. But how does that have an impact on us today as we are being approached by our Lord to carry what he wants us to carry to the kingdom for our generation. As always, when you look at the ministry of Paul, everything that Paul taught had its foundation in the logos of the word, but what Paul, the revelation that Paul got, Paul explicitly said that I didn't get this revelation from man. Amen. It came from God. Amen. And it took us beyond what had previously been written. It used that as the foundation or the launching pad, if you allow me to use that vernacular, okay. for him to move into the greater dimension of the revelation that God was depositing in him for that season. Paul longed to see the day that we're living in. Absolutely. And so there is a revelational insight that Yes, we're going to utilize the foundation of the written word of God as our springboard, but God is taking us beyond into another dimension of revelational glory that has to be established for this season, for we are a different generation. And I think what you just said is a bad word in many people's hearing. A different generation. Uh, this is a new season. This is a new time in the history of the kingdom. And as such, it, you know, people tend to internalize that as being something bad, as though we're trying to say that God has changed, that God has, you know, and, and, and so they reject that type of thinking and that line of thought. We tend to want to hold, beloved, people yes. hostage to a time and a season of the kingdom that has come and gone. That's it. And we want to hold people hostage to that season. 
and that is one, uh, it is error, number one, and number two, it is disingenuous. Because when we read the scriptures and read them for what they're saying to us and not what we want them to say to us, we come away with a perspective of the kingdom that, uh, that we previously didn't have, okay? See, see, it's important to, we were on, uh, uh, in fellowship last night and Pastor Lewis uh, uh, said something on the line and many people believe that Jesus uh, longed to go to the cross. He wanted to go to the cross. Well, when you read the scriptures for what they say, we understand clearly that Jesus did not want to go to the cross. He did it. He endured it. But he did not want to go. And you say, well, wait a minute, Apostle. How, how are you going to make that statement? Well, go to the garden. Jesus said, Lord, Father, if there be any way. Take this cup from me. Take this cup from me. Let this cup pass from me. Let me not have to go and, and do this the way I see this thing has to be done. Nevertheless, not your will, but my will be. I mean, not my will, but your will be done. So we must understand that. That when we read the scriptures for what they're saying to us, Amen. then we, we avoid reading into the scriptures what we want them to say. And that's a challenge. But anyway, uh, I digress for just a moment. But I'll have to edit that out. So I digress for just a moment. And I want to get into, into this, this uh, uh, part of the discussion, Apostle. Let's talk about the apostolic mandate. Okay? Because the, the, the reality of our season of the kingdom is that we are um, we are no more apostles are no more different than pastors, no different than prophets. You know, they're all the same. Let's talk about the apostolic mandate uh, in contrast to uh, the other of the fivefold ministry. Kind of start that off and, 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 and take us and share with us a little bit about When that we mandate. look at the mandate of the apostles, it was to establish uh, precedence for building the kingdom. Amen. And, and, and before, you, before you leave that, Dig a little bit deeper into precedent. When you say established precedent, share with the audience what you're saying there. That the foundation of the kingdom was to be established by the apostles. What they had received from the Lord, mm -hmm. they were to actually uh, bring to manifestation, actually speak it into the atmosphere, Deposited into the people. You know, on the day of Pentecost, Peter, for example, he had to stand up and, and really uh, give a revelation of, of what had just, just taken occurred. place. Yes, yes. And he, yes. what did he say? This is that. This is that. This, this is that. This is that that was written by the prophet, prophet Joel. Joel. That's right. He had to give you insight to what was actually taking place. And so, Peter is not here. Who's going to give the insight of what's actually happening in today's kingdom process? It has, the apostles have to understand who they are, what their purpose is in the earth. And the voice of the apostle is literally the voice of God Amen. in the earth. It is. And so we have to understand that that was which when Christ breathed upon them, he was breathing the essence and the substance of who he is. And that was passed down from generation to generation. And when Christ calls you and establishes you in their, that office, there is a different revelational insight and a different revelational voice that's deposited in your innermost being. And you are... Uh, demanded by the Spirit to bring that voice forth, which many do not, because we're still trying to operate from uh, still a pastoral and oversight mentality rather than an insight and an establishing.
mentality. We have to establish what the kingdom is actually supposed to look like by voicing what we hear by the voice of Holy Spirit. And, and, and beloved, I hope you grab that. I hope you grab what Apostle Poole just said because it's so important for you to understand that we have been so indoctrinated into the pastoral mindset in that he is the head of the church, he is the head of the local congregation, what he says goes, only what he says is allowed to go. And then we get into some of these uh, more obscure forms of church governance where the deacons and the bishops and the elders and they have usurped authority over the pastor and the pastor has to capitulate to them. It has gotten to a place, Apostle, to where there is such confusion at the local church level, which is where most of us engage the kingdom at the local church level, mm -hmm. that not only has that confusion obscured the local church, but it has completely obfuscated the, 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 the apostolic. It, you know, we, we're pushed to the side. We're marginalized. We're, we're pushed as an afterthought, uh, um, as a fringe move of the kingdom. Yet, uh, you'll find that many of those that have done exactly what you said will say that we don't move outside the word the apostles uh, are not here but the scriptures if you're going to look at what the the scriptures actually say it says God is not the author of confusion but what we see going on in the body is total chaos total chaos but God has set forth apostles to bring order so let's, in continuing along the mandate, and we've got probably another two or three minutes uh, on this subject, but continuing on the mandate of the apostolic, if I heard you correctly, you said apostles are establishing the order and what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is to be. Did, did I hear that? Did I hear you say that? As such, then... We are given the mandate to establish those things that the body of Christ must operate and how the body of Christ must operate. We have to. Without that apostolic voice speaking into the lives of people, they actually don't understand how to connect to the headship of Christ. So without the apostolic apostle, and, and, and let's press forward, let's press, let's press deeper into this conversation. Without the apostolic, can there be order in the church, in the body of Christ, without the apostolic? Not kingdom order. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, we're, we're talking kingdom here. We're not talking, we're not talking system church, as our dear sister in, 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 in uh, 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 Diane Chappelle likes to you know, phrase it, the system church. Uh, Apostle Diane Chappelle, uh, we're not talking that. We're talking kingdom order. Can there be kingdom order without the apostolic? No. Okay. Without the apostolic voice, the apostolic voice echoes the voice of God. Is there and is the system church in danger of the parable of the ten virgins <laughs> because of the lack of order and the lack of presence of the apostolic? Right, because the apostolic is going to usher in the Holy Spirit. The apostolic, the true apostolic voice is going to cling to the voice of the Spirit. It's going to reiterate what the Spirit is saying. See, if we're going to be uh, proliferators, uh, if, if you'll let me use that, of the Word, the Word says, he that hath an ear, let, let him hear. hear what the Spirit is saying to the ecclesia. See, one of the things that we've missed in the system church or the established church or however you want to phrase that is that Holy Spirit has been locked out of most of what's going on or what's taking place in the system of religion. And so how can you Establish kingdom order without the voice of the Spirit. And the scriptures in, it, it, it says to us that we walk by faith, not by sight. And I know that that has to, especially in the charismatic movement, 
that has taken on just a just a, a, a you know a, a, a life that that you know I've come to understand is not necessarily representative of the kingdom. So what I mean by that is saying this, that we are to walk by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It does not say that faith cometh by hearing or reading the scriptures. Now that's what we've made faith to be, reading the scriptures. But the scriptures say to us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, one And that actually the concept and the precept from the Hebraic is actually hearing the voice of God. Of course, by the voice of God. That's why that's exactly where I was going. That it comes by hearing the voice of God. And there is in our generation and, and in all generations a voice, Holy Spirit, that has been given to the ecclesia so that we can know what God is saying. Absolutely. Because the Holy Spirit is given to us, as the scripture says, to reveal unto us the things of God, yes, even the deep things of God. Okay, no man knoweth the spirit of God save the spirit, uh, 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 the spirit that is from God, That's and absolutely. He has given to us. Now, I, I want to get back. I want to get back to the apostolic voice. We talked a little bit about the mandate, the establishing, and I asked the question just a second ago: Can there be order in the church, in the kingdom, without the apostolic voice? And your response to me was, no. Or, or, or does the apostolic voice have to be present in order for there to be order? And your, your response was yes to that question. If, in fact, the apostolic voice is necessary to establish that order, talk about the reliance of the apostolic voice on Holy Spirit to make sure that that order is in place. Let me give you what I hope is a parallel. Jesus said to the apostles, tarry ye in Jerusalem till you be endued with power on high. Mm -hmm. So what was that power he was talking about? The coming of Holy Spirit. Amen. So without the power, the voice, the indwelling of Holy Spirit, there is no kingdom order. There is no kingdom authority. There is no kingdom pattern. And let me, let me take it a little farther. They already had the scripture. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Torah, the Septuagint. They had it. They had all of that. But Jesus said it was necessary for them to have Holy Spirit. He said that is that which was going to lead them into all truth. Well, they already had the word. Amen. They were dependent on the written word. Amen. But what was going to re revolutionize their ministry was their relationship with Holy Spirit. What was going to give them their kingdom identity was their relationship with Holy Spirit. What was going to give them true kingdom authority was their relationship with Holy Spirit. In this season, in this season, the apostolic voice, the sound that is coming out of the spirit realm, the sound, the voice that is coming from the spirit realm, Concerning the apostolic, we, how imp imperative, how important, how necessary is it that the ecclesia begin to embrace the voice of the apostolic? Because can the ecclesia come into order without that voice? The ecclesia cannot come unto order because... And one of the things is we have relegated to the ecclesia to something that it is not. And let me tell you Talk what Talk about that, yes. Because, see, we've interpreted ecclesia as church. Well, ecclesia is not church. Ecclesia is the called out assembly, the called out sanctified one, those that are being called out of the places of religion. Paul was 
a leader. Paul was of the established religious Order system of, the day. of his day. Yes, he was. But Christ called him out of that. Wow. John the Baptist was next in line. His father was Zacharias the priest. Yes. He was next in line in the priesthood in that religious order of the day. God called him out of that to fulfill his mandate. Well, listen, beloved, we, we've got a, a, just about a minute more on this program, but I want to just delve into that what you just said, Apostle. Many of you are sitting in system and look sitting in religious uh, uh, assemblies. I, I, I grant you, you're in an assembly, you're in, an, uh, in a religious assembly, and I want you to understand that many of you are starting to hear Holy Spirit tug at you, call at you, speak at you, speak to you. You're hearing a sound that you haven't heard before, and that is the sound, the voice of the apostolic. Well, listen, I want to encourage you to say to you that you need to come out and begin to open your heart to hear the voice of Holy Spirit. Well, listen, Apostle, we, 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 we've run out of time. And I want to encourage those of you that are watching to stay with us. Join us again next time as we continue to bring you the voice of the apostolic. God bless you and we'll see you again next time. God bless.